Hey there everybody, this is Lee with Creative Two Time Mom and this week's homeschool collab letter is G. So we have G for games. So if you are a homeschooling family like us, you find that you have a ton of games in your house and most of them probably have some kind of an educational application. <laughs> I was just realizing today my daughter's both my kids have a shelf in their closet and so my daughter's whole shelf is games my son's whole, whole shelf is games and we have two drawers in our garage that are full of games plus we have random toys like the more the engineering type things legos all over the house musical instruments all over the house um it's kind of taking over homeschooling starts to take over that's for sure so I wanted to just name a couple of games that you can use in your homeschool and some of their like skills that you learn from them a lot of these I'm sure you guys know we have of course Candyland which is great for counting and colors shoots and ladders same thing shoots and ladders are great for counting and um, I would say like natural consequences. I don't know if the newer version has this or not, but we have an older version where if they're gonna come down a chute, it's because they did something. So there's a picture of the child doing something they shouldn't have done, and they fall down a chute, and it shows the consequence of what that behavior would have been. If they're gonna go up a ladder, it's showing a child like helping an elderly person cross the street, or um, maybe, baking a cake for somebody and then they go up the ladder and there is like a, a reward for their behavior. So I love shoots and ladders for the consequences aspect of it. Of course, we all know this is just kind of a normal game that almost everybody has in their house. And that is memory. We have several versions of memory in our house. We have um, Toy Story, we have Let's see the other one I'm thinking. Oh, Strawberry Shortcake. We have Rudolph, and we have one that's called a Disney Challenge one, and so it's all kinds of pictures from the park. This is definitely for an older student if you get this one. It's pictures of different areas of the park and of Epcot, even different characters. And then you have to, if you have, you want a, a green card, then you want to get all the green matches. And then you get extra points. Or if you're stealing matches from somebody else's color, you get a different kind of point system. That was definitely for an older kid. But memory, I think, is really good for just waking up their brains and starting that like cognitive thinking. Um, probably around age four is when you can really start to do that. So memory is awesome. I'm trying to think what else we've got here, where I want to start. So for preschool age as well, Hi Ho Cherio, I think this one's classic. Everyone has this in their home. It's great for um, taking turns, sharing, recognizing numbers. This one can even be a great team um, game because you can play the version where you're not playing against each other, but you're playing against the bird. And so you're trying to not let the bird spill all your fruit. So that's a fun one for sure. And that's a good for like age three. Uh, moving on up a little bit older, I have two alphabet games here. One is a Scrabble game and it's called Alpha Scoop. Comes in a, like a soup pot and you have a spoon where you can scoop your letters. Everybody gets a card which has five different words on it. You can either do all the words or you can just say, okay, we're going to do line one. And you're scooping letters as you're going along trying to find the right letters to build your word. And in here, I can't find one right now, but in here there's also a couple of black bugs. So if you get a black bug, then you have to take all your tiles you've put on your card, dump them back in the pot, and then you have to keep going. And then the person that solves their word first hurts and puts the lid on, and then they you get to check their letters and see if they get a point. This one's a lot of fun. And the blanks count as anything. And there is blanks, just like there is in Scrabble. So that's kind of a good introductory Scrabble, but also introductory working on letters. This one's called Alpha Bug Soup. I had never heard of this. My mom picked it up for the kids. It's a game board and you gotta move all your bugs around to get them into your soup pot by recognizing you pick up a bug in the middle and you flip it over to see the letter and you have to sound out the letter and do a word that starts with that letter. So that's Alpha Bug. And that's how you get to move around the board. And actually there's two different games in there. My kids are helping me. Apparently there's two different games in there. This one's sequence. This one's for a little bit older, of course. 
this is kind of a strategy type game, which is good for higher level thinking. It says starting around age seven, my kids were playing this game around age five. It is doable, but it takes a lot of patience and preferably no distractions. So this is a card game, but it has also has a game board. Everybody starts out with seven cards, and I'm pulling all jokers here. Let me see. Okay, so you start out with seven cards, just regular looking cards. Two-eyed jacks can act as a wild card. One-eyed jacks can remove an opponent's chip, and you're trying to get a sequence of five on the game board, and your suits and your numbers are all mixed up, so it's not like you can go one, two, three, four, five kind of a thing. You have to have the right cards. So you're constantly looking around the board trying to figure out where you can build your sequence or where you need to block your opponent. So that's a really fun one. Monopoly, of course, classic. We have the Disneyland version. This again says ages eight and up, but if you have the patience, your kids can be learning this as early as, I think Noah was probably five or six when he started playing this with us. And we would always kind of let him control the game so that if he rolled, he had to count all of them or he had to add how many spaces he got to move. Sometimes when I would roll, I'd have him add how many spaces I had to move. We worked with him on being the banker. So you're working on adding and subtracting and money and percentages and um, building your property so that you can earn money. This is a good one for math. Absolutely cannot recommend that one highly enough. And of course, ours is completely falling apart. The last thing I have to add is puzzles. And I think all homeschoolers probably have a huge puzzle closet. This is one of our favorites, the USA puzzle. Um, I love anything made by Melissa and Doug because they're really good quality, the colors are great, and they're just super durable. We've had this one for about five years probably. And any kind of puzzles that you can get your kids in for that spatial awareness, putting things together, and of course these are great, this one specifically because it has a map of the United States. You can do, with Melissa and Doug, there's a lot of like animals, fish, birds, um, a lot more educational resources but really any puzzle to just get them thinking and looking at shapes and strategies and um, putting things together. So, oh, I have one more. Yahtzee. If your kid is starting multiplication, I this is fantastic. <laughs> so that they're adding and they're multiplying. I didn't think about the multiplication aspect of it until there was, um, I mean, there's five dice. So if they roll three, it's like, okay, what's three times five? there's your score for your threes, you know. So Yahtzee's a great one as well. It's like learning disguised is fun. So those are some of our favorite games. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your, some of your favorite games are for homeschooling. I'd love to check it out. Talk to you later.